The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. In Panovich, there was a, a janitor. His name was Tzvi. And this janitor was a survivor. He came from Europe after the war, and he lost his wife, he lost his children, and somehow he, he managed to escape, and he was... Uh, you know, his life was very lonely, his life was very sad, but he was grateful to the Rabbi Nishlam that he was able to at least be in Eretz Yisrael, and every day he did his job, and he did his job very well, and he would, uh, you know, sweep the floors of the base measures, sweep the dormitories, uh, polish the, uh, the Aron HaKadosh, the famous golden Aron HaKadosh in the base medrash, and he took great pride, and he liked seeing the Bachim learn, and he realized that even though he couldn't learn so well and he was deprived of, of yeshiva education because of the war, but now he was able to at least be Messiah Ledvar Mitzvah to help uh, the Bnei Taira learn and he, was, uh, and he took great pride in, in, although it was a menial job for him, but it didn't bother him because he knew that he was doing important work in the yeshiva. And now it came Simchas Taira and the Bachram, of course, uh, auctioned off the Aliyahs, and they bid with Blat Gemara, and one got Atah Reisa, one got uh, Psicha, one got Kibu, the, the Aliyahs at night, the Aliyahs of the day, um, Chasen Taira, Chasen Bereshis. And then they took the Sifrei Taira out of the Aaron, the Rosh Hashibas were dancing with the Sifrei Taira, Rav Shach and Rav David Probarsky, and... Uh, and, and uh, Shlomo Rizovsky, the great Rosh Hashivas of, of Panovich. And then they stepped aside, and the Panovich Rav, of course, who was the Rosh Hashiva, he was the one that founded the Yeshiva, he was the Rav in Panovich in Europe before the war, he lost his whole family, and he lost his whole community, and his whole Yeshiva, and he rebuilt in Bnei Brak uh, this amazing Yeshiva, uh, uh, Panovich, in Eretz Yisrael, and he started building a Kiyadua at the worst time in history of Eretz Yisrael, when the Nazis were perched at the, at the gateways of Eretz Yisrael, there was the famous general <coughs> Ramel Yamach Shemai, the Nazi general, the desert fox as he was called, he was about to storm Eretz Yisrael the Yidden Eretz Yisrael were petrified, the Arabs were already calling dibs on homes in Eretz Yisrael, they would uh, put their names on this dira, on that dira, on this house, on that house this is mine, they were already, you know dividing up the spoils because they, they knew that in a few days the Nazi tanks would storm into the Holy Land and, and the Jews would all be liquidated as they were in Europe. And miracle on miracles, there was a uh, Yeshua, but at the point of everybody believing that the Nazis were about to invade Eretz Yisrael, this is when the Hakamas HaYeshiva began, the, the Hanachas Evan Apina, the cornerstone laying uh, founda- the foundation laying event took place and everybody thought the Panevich Rav was completely like, you know, not living in the world of reality. He was a dreamer. Somebody, in fact, famously asked Rosh Hashiva, are, uh, are, a- are you dreaming? Do you understand what's going on in the world? Maybe you don't get the news. But we're about to be, you're starting Yeshiva, you think hundreds of Bachim are going to learn in B'nai Brak, we should, Halavai, we should survive in concentration camps in a few weeks, Chas Rishon, but you're building now a yeshiva, a makam tayar. what are you doing? And the Panevich Rav, Rav Kahneman, famously responded, yes, I am a dreamer. I'm a dreamer a thousand percent. But unlike other dreamers, I am not sleeping. I'm very much awake, and I have every intention to do this and to build this for the Tyra and Klai Yisrael will survive. Now the truth of the matter is, that he wasn't just an optimist. People think, oh, it's a great story about optimism. He wasn't really just an optimist, the Panevich Rav. The Panevich Rav was a Talmud of the Chavetz Chaim. He learned in the, in the Kachim Kailo that the Chavetz Chaim founded, and in Radin he felt that Mashiach was about to come, and who's going to pass in Shilas on, on, on Toma, on Tyra, on, on Avedis Hakaihanim in the Beis Mishra, on Kachim, who's going to do all that? Who, who knows that? So he said, I'm going to have to have a kailal here. I'm going to hire the best and the brightest Avrechem 
to learn day and night in this kailah and to know the halachas of kachim, not just on a lamdisha manner, but halacha lamaisa practically, because we need paiskim. That's how much the Chavetz Chaim believed that Mashiach was really about to come. And one of those avrechim was the Panavit Shirav as a young man, together with Rebuchan Mas when they were Chavrisas. So the Panavit Shirav once was by the Chavetz Chaim, and the Chavetz Chaim was saying about, and the Chavetz Chaim died in 1933, which was like five years before World War II broke out. Six years before it worked. So, and he was saying that, Baruch HaKadosh, that the millions of people who died in World War I, they didn't know, call it World War I then because there was no World War II. They called it the Great War. World War I was known as the Great War until there was World War II, and now we call it World War I, World War II, but then there was only World War I. And World War I, millions and millions and millions were killed. And Millions of people were killed, and they were speaking about this. The Chavetz Chaim, the Chavetz Chaim says there's going to be another Milchama, and it's going to make the Great War, it's going to make that Milchama look like child's play. That was Lashon the Chavetz Chaim. It's going to look like Kinderspiel, like, like children's playing. Like that's how it's going to be paling in comparison to the death and the destruction and the mayhem that's going to be, be wrought in Europe. So they asked the Chavetz Chaim, and what's going to be with Klal Yisrael? Are the Yidden going to have a chance to survive this, this great Mohammed? And the Chavitz Chaim, quoting a Pasuk in Nach, says, Uvahar Tziyayn Tia Plata, that in Har Tziyayn, on the mountain of Zion, meaning in Eretz Yisrael, Tia Plata, that will be the place of refuge. Vahaya Kaidesh, and it will be holy. So they understood that Eretz Yisrael was going to survive, that Eretz Yisrael was not going to be touched by this war from the Chavitz Chaim. So the Panavich Rav had this Kabbalah from his Rabbi, from the Chavetz Chaim, that Eretz Yisrael was going to be spared. So when he was planting seeds in Eretz Yisrael at that time to build the greatest Makam Taira, perhaps in modern times, he, he didn't just do it because he was optimistic, he did it because he had Emunas Chachamim, he knew that the Chavetz Chaim had guaranteed that this would be a Makam of Plata, that Eretz Yisrael was going to be safe and secure, and he built based on that promise, on that Avtacha of the Chavetz Chaim. In fact, if you go to Panovich today, there is a building opposite the yeshiva. It's a whole campus, and the yeshiva is a, a big building. There are dormitories, but then opposite it, maybe a few hundred feet away, is a, uh, another big building. And for many years, it was just like a shell of a building. It was, a, uh, it was just a, a building that had no, no purpose, seemingly, but... What it really was, was the, the, the Panovich Rav built it as a, uh, as a memory for the Holocaust, because again, he lived with the reality of his family all getting killed in the, in the war, and his community, his Talmidim, his, it was a very big community, Panovich, before the war in Lithuania, and the whole city was liquidated, the whole city. And so he built this possibly as a museum, of some sort. I think today they, they use it as a base medrash. It was never actually made into a museum, but he wanted a permanent uh, memory of, of the, of the Mohammed, of the Khurban in Europe. And on the top of that building, and you could probably find it in pictures, but if you, next time you go to Eretz Yisrael, you check it out for yourself, guess what Pasuk is on the top of this building? That's what it says, blazon, emblazon, embossed on the top of this building in stone is that Pasuk that he heard from the Chavetz Chaim himself, promising that Eretz Yisrael would be a place of refuge. So going back to Simchas Taira and Panovich, the Panovich Rav had a Sefer Taira, he was a Kayin, probably I'm sure he got the first Hakafa, and he now moves out of the circle to give the Bachrim a chance to dance with Sefer Taira and to, and to be Lebedic and to dance with each other. And Tzvi, the janitor, was standing on the side and the whole time he was like tapping on a shtender and he was enjoying it and he was getting nachas. And all of a sudden, something changed in Tzvi's facial expression. And he went from being, from being happy and yantif dick and all of a sudden, something like transpired in his, in his face, in his mind, and he started getting a horrified look, a horrified look, and all of a sudden, 
what happened was the boys were no longer the Panovich Talmidim that he was looking at, but he was seeing his own sons. He had two sons that were killed in the, in the war, and he saw his own two sons as those Talmidim that were dancing. They might have been their age at that time, or maybe he was imagining them to be them. And all of a sudden he started like having a meltdown in the middle of the Panovich based Medrash. And he ran over to the Panovich Rav, and in a ghastly scream he said, Rebbe! And the Panovich Rav immediately understood what was going on because the Panovich Rav lived with this himself, this reality. To be a survivor, as strong as you are, but you know, there's always that undercurrent of like, what in the world happened? How could this happen? The Rav also lost his wife and children, and he knew what Svi was going through. And now all the Akafas stopped. All the dancing stopped. You can imagine the, the big Panovich based Medrash with maybe hundreds of Talmidim dancing, and it all came to a screeching halt. And you see the Panovich Rav trying to console the janitor of Svi. And they cried on each other's shoulders. And then the Rav pulled away to look at Svi. And he said to Tzvi, he says, Du biskerecht, you're so right. Rib Tzvi, you're so right. But think about it for a second. We shouldn't cry for them. Because do you know now where they are? Do you know where your sons are right now? Do you know where my sons are right now? He says, they're sitting right next to the throne, right next to the Kisei HaKavid, in the highest realms of Gan Eden. The only reason, he said, we should cry is because we have an awesome responsibility on our shoulders that we were left behind and we have to build and we have to accomplish and who knows if we're doing enough to rebuild from the ashes. Who knows? That's the question that haunts me. But in terms of being makabel, what HaKadosh Baruch Hu did, we have to be makabel at Simcha because we understand that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the Avarachim. If HaKadosh Baruch Hu said that this is what needs to happen, then that's what he has to happen. That's what has to happen. In Shamayim, there's a different Cheshman that we don't understand, but in Shamayim, the Kedashim, the six million Kedashim, are in a joyous state. They are, they died al Kedash Hashem, and they are, they are next to the Rabbi Yishlam. They're dancing with the Rabbi Yishlam. And so we have to be makabel everything b'simcha, and the only thing we have to do is just constantly try to strive to do more and more as survivors. He says, now the Rabbi Nishlam doesn't want us to cry, no. Now he wants us to sing and to dance with each other and with his Hei Lugataira. And slowly he began to dance together with Svi, Ashreinu Matayv Chalkeinu. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire dot org.